And good evening, ladies and gentlemen, as we are overlooking downtown Fort Worth in the Tarrant County Courthouse. We welcome you here as we continue week one action here in the Simulation Football League's 18th season. As we got a South matchup tonight between the Mexico City Aztecs and the Fort Worth Toros. As we welcome you inside the booth this evening, this is Nate Hall, your play-by-play -play analyst. And this evening uh, with me in the booth is none other than Brett Solberg. Uh, Brett, how are you doing tonight? And, and what are you looking for in this game as we're getting ready to, to get these two teams going? Nate, I'm very excited for this game. There's a different feeling in the air already this season. In the stockyards, the Fort Worth fans are on their feet. They are very, very looking forward to this season, taking away that 3-9 and nine finish that they had previous season, and they're facing off against a Mexico City team that are just coming from a heartbreaking loss in the semifinals. This is two teams that are just gung-ho, all ready to go, and I'm totally excited for it tonight. Yeah, and as we take a look at the tail of the tape between these two teams, uh, Mexico City's defense has a young secondary, but the offense of Fort Worth has a young quarterback, the rookie Johnny Reno, uh, making his first start tonight. Is that going to be one of the keys that you're going to be looking for tonight? Yeah, it's going to be a big key is just to see how the first start for Johnny Reno is going to uh, occur for him because there's going to be a lot of nerves for him. It's different than the SFLM. There's going to be like 10 times as many people kind of watching you from the stands and you got to really worry about uh, getting to uh, the accuracy right away so you can get used to it and not everything like that. So a uh, big key is going to be that quarterback battle between him and Matt Wilson. Well, he's going to start off on the bench, Reno, is to start off this game as Fort Worth has the ball on the tee. And they're going to be kicking it off to Mexico City to start this game off. As it's Amelia Rose about to kick this one away. And we are underway here in Fort Worth. And returning up the middle all the way up to the 24-yard line. And that is where Mexico City is going to get their start as uh, Lockett. Uh, returns that's Nick Lockett wide receiver for Mexico City returning it up to the 24. Yeah and we're going to see the action here of 13 season veteran Matt Wilson there's a, a huge polar opposite between two uh two teams quarterbacks here this is going to be veteranship at its finest tonight from Wilson. Absolutely and we'll get to the starting lineups after this first down play for Mexico City Wilson back to throw swings it out and he's got his man out in the flats and that's going to be a five yard gain that's going to be the running back, Phoenix Jones, with his first reception going through Mexico, the rest of Mexico City's offense. We mentioned Matt Wilson, quarterback. Phoenix Jones on that play was the halfback with the reception. Ray Bentley is the fullback. Jason Bartley, Nick Lockett, Jaleb, I'm sorry, Jacob McCall, and T.T. Crystal, and Orange Darby. They have five wide receivers on offense with Bill Henry and Mike Daggs. Uh, the veteran Mike Daggs on as tight ends. As we get second and five, and they hand up right up the middle to Phoenix Jones, and that's going to be enough to get the first down and move the chains, and that was a quick first down there, Brett. And check that on the first two plays there. Ray Bentley got both of oh, them first me. on the swing, first on the swing pass, and the second one on a fullback dive. But uh, that's what you get from Ray Bentley. You know he was he was the starting running back himself at one point, so he knows how to speed his way through, and now he's out a little bit power. Absolutely. So first and ten from. Oh, and he's got. Phoenix Jones gets his first carry of tonight's game, and he loses two yards on that play. Is uh, Fort Worth number sixty Joey Schwent in his fourth season comes up and makes the tackle for loss. Yeah, and it was uh, instant right away. Schwent beat his offensive lineman counterpart and got to Phoenix Jones right away. And that's how you're going to stop this Mexico City offense is to ground that ground game to net zero yardage. Absolutely is. That's going to be another handoff. I believe that is Phoenix Jones once again. It is. And he's going to get back only for a couple yards as Browning makes a tackle. As we go throughout the rest of this Fort Worth defense, uh, Jeff Duffy is a defensive end along with Jabril Kears. Defensive tackles are Joey Schwent and Jerry Degon. Uh, linebackers are E.K. Vincent, J.L. Browning, Gordon Dino. And we'll get to the rest of them after this play. Deep over the middle, that's going to be caught. And that is going to be going on. He's still on speed all the way. 81. And that's going to be a touchdown for number 81. Oh, my. Jacob McCall. 
as he gets his first touchdown of the season to put Mexico City on the board early in this ball game. Matt Wilson just a deep throw over the middle, and Jacob McCall did the rest. And we and I talked about how Mexico City's main line of offense is usually the running game, but this time Matt Wilson finds a wide open JP McCall, and it was basically all him from the way there as he broke two tackles on his way to the end zone, found himself enough space, and just kept running. This is a guy that only had 18 receptions for 187 yards last season, and he's starting off season 18 with a bang on his first catch with that touchdown, and now Mexico City up ahead. Or Delaney Nash couldn't make that tackle deep uh, down the field. And Jacob McCall goes and does the rest as Cole Varner is off for the extra point. The kick is up, and it is split down the uprights and good. And it's going to be an early 7-0 lead for Mexico City as they uh, just went right down the field and scored on their first possession as... Cole Varner has the ball on the tee and is about to kick this one off. And the rookie rookie quarterback, Johnny Reno, is going to have to dig out from a hole early in this ball game. As this kickoff is received about the three and returned up to about the 22-yard line. And that is where Fort Worth's offense uh, is going to start as that was number 15, Kate Stevens, on the return. Yeah, and like you said, this is gonna, it's going to be a hard to match uh, exactly what Matt Wilson did, but Johnny Reno is going to try his best here on his first drive of his career, and they're starting up with a bunch, so we might see a Jason Williams run here. Jason Williams or Jay-Z Bacon, they have a two running back set here this season as they hand the ball off to, that is going to be the halfback Jason Williams, and that's going to be a gain of about two yards as we introduce you to Fort Worth's offense. Quarterback is the rookie, Johnny Reno. Uh, first round pick, pick number two for, out of Tacoma. And we'll get to the rest of them after this play as they highlight uh, Tritz running up to the line. Second and eight. Uh, empty backfield with four wide. Trips up to the top. Reno back to throw. And that's going to be enough for a first down as Reno finds <clears throat> Mike Daggs, the veteran, with his first catch of the season. Mike Check Dagg. out is Charlie Baker on the catch. But nonetheless, it was a great it's it's a great and safe throw for Reno as well, just to get that out of the way. And that is gonna be another handoff, and that's Whoa. gonna be not a lot of running room on the left side for Jason Williams. And he is going all the way down to the 34 yard line, and that's gonna be a huge gain. If uh Brett, if Fort Worth could get plays like this. They are going to be in good shape with uh, if, if they can keep running like this down the field. Yeah, and you said it right away. There was wide open space. It was basically a parting of the Red Sea on the entire yeah. left side of the field for Williams to run down the field. It, it, it just seemed like Mexico City tried to guess right, and they, just, and they went left instead. But a great and fantastic run from Jason Williams. As they get first down here from the 34-yard line, Reno throws over the right side, dangerous pass, and that's going to be incomplete. Looking for his other, uh, I'm sorry, looking for his tight end, Robert Garrett Jr., the veteran, and uh, just tipped away by Mexico City and incomplete. Yeah, a little bit of an errant throw from Johnny Reno. It looked like to be double coverage on Robert Garrett Jr., who is probably one of the best tight ends in the SFL. Uh, so uh, I, there's no there's no bad reason why they would double cover him. As they come out in the gun for Reno, back to throw is uh, open. And he's not an open man. Left uh, left hand side of the field, all the way down to the 10 yard line of Mexico City. That is going to be Charlie Baker once again with his second catch, and that's going to be a first and goal. Yeah, and that one was just a uh, an eight yard. Uh, uh, corner out to the side of the field that was just left open. The safeties went a little bit too deep on that play, and it left Baker with a lot of space to catch that ball and run a little bit further down the sidelines. And like you said, they're at the 10-yard line, so they're first and goal here. First and goal from the 10. I formation with three wide. Reno under center. Hands the ball off to Jason Williams, and he's going to get a gain of about... Three yards there, down to the seven-yard line as we introduce it to the rest of the offense for Fort Worth uh, as we continue on this drive. We mentioned Garrett Jr. as tight end. 
Uh, the ones we haven't mentioned yet, Mike Twinscrew at number 84, wide receiver, coming over from Louisiana. Stephen Hacker, wide receiver. Uh, Kay Stevens, another wide receiver. They have a two-back set with Williams and Jay-Z Bacon and a fullback of Aaron Alexander as Reno is back to throw. Over the middle, he's got him, his man. And that's going to be a touchdown. And that is Cade Stevens with his first touchdown of the season. And there, I got to point away here from tying it up early. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention before the game, but I just forgot to, is that Fort Worth has a very vastly underrated set of receivers, and you just saw what, probably one of the better uh, the better receivers in this league all time in Cade Stevens getting that touchdown pass, and he's probably their wide receiver two or wide receiver three at that point. This entire drive has been uh, relied on essentially by Charlie Baker and Kate Stevens, two receivers you didn't think that they would get first targets to, but nonetheless, Fort Worth is an extra point away from tying it. And the kick, the kick is down. The snatch down kicks up and good as Amelia Rose gets that extra point, uh, and it is tied seven apiece. Today, the SFL honors Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and his messages of love, diversity, and equality. The Simulation Football League is proud to spotlight players from all countries and creeds, all cultures and communities, in every SFL game all season long. We are stronger together when we treat each other how we want to be treated. Thanks to every individual and yet community who makes our melting pot what it has become. As Amelia Rose kicks this one off, the rookie kicker for Fort Worth. And that's going to be returned up by... Nick Lockett all the way up to about the 25-yard line, and we'll see Matt Wilson and company with their second drive of the game here, Brett. And I think Mexico City wants to go back to that run game there and get that established. This is, the, this is basically what we we all know and love about Mexico City is that they like to run it up the gut as much as possible, and they've got Phoenix Jones and Ray Bentley to do this, but they're in shotgun. They are in shotgun. Matt Wilson with two wide out to the right. Back to throw is Wilson. And he's going to throw it out to uh, big Ray Bentley. And that is going to be a gain of about five yards to make it second and medium here at about the 29-yard line. Yeah, they had the two receivers up at the top to kind of just uh, break some space away as both running backs, both Phoenix Jones and uh, Ray Bentley, went on the flats route. Uh, Wilson decided to go on the left side to give Ray Bentley an ex another touch here. And uh, not a bad gain there. Five yards, I would say that's a that's a good first down play. Looks like a second and a long five, maybe almost six here. As he hands the ball off on a draw this time to... Uh, Phoenix Jones, and that's going to gain about two yards before number 54, uh, J.L. Browning, brings him down for only a two-yard gain. Yeah, and those linebackers are definitely going to have to be on their feet when it comes to uh, noticing if Matt Wilson's going to throw or pass because he's very unpredictable that way, and Browning just uh, made the right call on that play. Third and four, they need this one to convert if they're going to get a first down, and, and that's stop. not going to happen. Ray Bentley gets the catch in the flats, but only gains one yard before uh, number 30, Aiden Davis, brings him down before he get that first down. And again, it's all about that play recognition that you have to recognize right away. You got to see if they're going to have that that flats route again uh, this time. And uh, with the secondary kind of bunching up a little bit, they had enough time to kind of close the gap between uh, Bentley and the first down line. Oh, that was almost blocked. Cole Varner could barely get that one away. And that is going to be re returned at about the 36-yard line. And that is where uh, Kay Stevens is tackled and Johnny Reno and company will get their second drive of the game. Uh, for a Mexico City team that made the playoffs last year, for them to go three and out early in this ball game, uh, makes you kind of scratch your head a little bit. Maybe they're just trying to get over some, some, uh, some jitters. Yeah, and the big key here is that they love to dominate uh, possession time, and that was a very short drive. As they hand the ball off a first down, and he's got an opening on the right-hand side. That is going to be Jason Williams for a huge gain up the right side all the way out to almost midfield to the 49-yard line, and that's going to be a first down. 
It was a fantastic run from Jason Williams, but I got to give credit to the center here. See right there, 72. Um, that is uh, Stephen Borders that kept up with uh, Williams the whole time to kind of help out with any blocking that he could. Uh, and, and again, excellent blocking from the receivers and the, and the offensive line to give that space for Jason Williams to get a quick first down at a new set for Fort Worth. As Johnny Reno comes out with split backs in the backfield and under center and three wide. He's back to throw, has plenty oh. of time. He finds his man, and that is going to be all the way out to the 35 yard line of Mexico City. And that is going to be Steven. I'm sorry, that's going to be Mike Twinscrew, the, the new wide receiver coming over from Louisiana, making his first catch of the season. Well, I gotta say, Johnny Reno has got some cajones there with that throw. Dexter Jackson basically right in front of the football, and uh, Reno just nails a dot to twin screw to get another first down, and it, it, Fort Worth's rolling right now. Back to throw is Reno, and he is running wow. out of time. He escapes that sack somehow, oh. and that is going to be incomplete off the hands. That looks like Matt Anderson was in coverage, but Williams couldn't get a handle on that. It's going to be uh, a complete pass. Yeah, and, and Johnny Reno so far is really impressing me uh, just on these two drives so far. Um, definitely with his composure and throwing throwing dots into t uh, tight passes, dodging uh, defensive ends like he is, and still trying to get a pass out. Like this is this is what you want to see from the Fort Worth quarterback if you are a, a, a Toros fan. This is this is a great start. Absolutely, as he comes out again in the gun. Shows you what, how they, how much they believe in this quarterback here. As they get a second and ten, he's back to throw. Throws it out in the flats. Got his man, but it's going to be no gain on that play. Uh, as that is going to be Aaron Alexander, uh, the fullback here in his uh, second season with the team, uh, for no gain on that play. And Gerard Brody basically uh, saw that from a mile away and inched a little bit closer to Alexander, so that when he got the when he got the catch, he was going to be tackled. Third down here, Reno back to throw. He got his nice. man, and that is going to be enough for a first down. As Mike Twinscrew once again, we saw we saw Twinscrew over in Louisiana uh, make a lot of big catches, and here early in this ball game, looks like he might be a big target here for this. Uh, Fort Worth squad as he gets enough for another first down deep in Mexico City's territory. Yeah, Twinscrew was more of like a tertiary kind of receiver in Louisiana, and he only got 354 yards and a touchdown with him last season. And it looked like uh, it looks like already Fort Worth is already relying uh, as that wide receiver two uh, option for Johnny Reno. Reno back into gun once again from the 14 yard line has plenty of time to throw looks over the middle wow. sliding catch are they gonna call that that is a touchdown uh, he dragged uh, Charlie Baker dragged his foot in bounds and they go up six points as Charlie Baker gets a touchdown two drives two touchdown passes for Johnny Reno that is called making a statement on your debut already in this first quarter this time giving um Charlie Baker a line to kind of run to the ball and uh, kind of slide and catch it. He still had his knees down. That was the big thing. Uh, knees in bounds. That's all that matters on, on that catch there. And now Fort Worth has the lead. And as Amelia Rose comes out for the extra point, uh, if Fort Worth can keep getting these uh, three and outs on defense, um, making as the extra point is good, making Mexico City go three and out on O. Uh, and winning the the field position battle here, Brett, uh, could turn into a long day for Mexico City if they're not careful. Yeah, and that, that, that Mexico City secondary definitely needs to shore things up, uh, basically to stop any bleeding from happening. Uh, right now it's been back and forth, and uh, Fort Worth has made the first key stop to, to get themselves to this lead. As Amelia Rose kicks this one away, <clears throat> return from about the five yard line up the middle and he's going to get about the 27 yard line and that is where uh mexico city matt wilson and company will come back out for their next drive uh if you're new to the sfl the simulation football league combines traditional sports esports and a role-playing game into one team strategies are being executed in real time by our simulations as real life players compete on the virtual gridiron 
For more information about the SFL, visit our website at www.simulationfl.net. The SFL, we put the fan in fantasy. As Matt Wilson is back to throw, has his man. That's Phoenix Jones off to the left side, but he's going nowhere. And he's going to lose a yard on that play before he's tackled. Yeah, and it seems like early on, this Fort Worth defense is really keying on both Phoenix Jones and Ray Bentley, which is probably Mexico City's two uh, biggest targets, uh, aside from, I would probably say, Jason Bartley, uh, who, which we haven't seen any action from him yet, but uh, they're doing a great job on him. As they hand the ball off, that is going to be uh, Phoenix Jones again. And aside from a couple of uh, runs up the middle early on in this game, Phoenix Jones also hasn't had very much room to run yet. Yeah, they're really shoring up Phoenix Jones on any run play right now, which uh, as you can see here with the four wide out set, they're going to force Matt Wilson to throw this ball again, but that's that's also a dangerous uh, option. Absolutely, third and ten, Matt Wilson back to throw, finds nice. a man over the middle, and that is going to be Jason Bartley right on cue to get that first down all the way out to their own 42-yard line. And Jason Bartley's been a patient man amongst this Mexico City organization, and I believe at this point they they trust him in being that f uh, number one receiver for this team, uh, especially with three rookie wideouts that they have on this on this squad now. He's probably going to be one of those uh, leaders on that offense. So a great catch and a new set of downs for Mexico City. Absolutely, and, and uh, with Jacob McCall and only in his second year with the team out of five seasons here in the league, uh, they're looking for him to be that leader as Mel Wilson is back to throw. And he does get his uh, completion there over the middle, completed to young Orain Darby, the rookie that we just mentioned, and that's going to be a five-yard gain. Yeah, and uh, Darby doing himself pretty good in Annapolis there to get himself the 77th uh, overall pick in this season's draft here. Gets a nice in-route catch. Wilson back to throw once again on second and five. Over the middle, dumps it off only for a one-yard gain, and that is going to be Bill Henry, uh, the tight end, making his first catch of the season to set up a third and four. Yeah, and that was just a simple check down pass for him. So uh, just to get the yards going because they had that stop and Fort Worth is going here. Again, they're probably getting uh, back to that time possession dominance that they want to get. Matt Wilson back to throw. Has a man off to the right-hand side. That's going to be completed, and that's going to be another first down. As you take a look, Jacob McCall, two catches so far, 71 yards and that early touchdown. Yeah, and McCall, a, a nice deep out route. That was about an 8 to 10 yard out route right to the sidelines. And Wilson, once he saw that cut happen, that's where the ball slung. And uh, a great catch. As they come with a jumbo set of sorts, uh, hands the ball off to the fullback, Bentley. And he's only going to pick up a couple of yards. Uh, we all know that this uh, South Division is going to be very tough this season. Uh, earlier today... As we close out, we'll, we'll catch that thought as we uh, come back. Uh, we're at the end of the first quarter. The Toros with the early lead, 14-7. to You're watching the SFL here on Twitch. Don't go anywhere. As we welcome you back here inside the booth, Nate Hall with Brett Solberg, uh, Phil Cost, and Jerry DeGond on stats, making us sound and look smarter than we actually are. Uh, as they hand the ball off to uh, the running back of Phoenix Jones, and that's going to be a gain of about five yards or so on that play and setting up a third and short. Yeah, and that, and that this is what Mexico City wants to do. They kind of want to slow things down. They love doing these third yard, uh, third down conversions because it just dominates time of possession because they know if they dominate possession, they'll dominate the scoreboard. And... Uh, Wilson back to throw. He's got his man over the right-hand side. Enough for the first down, and that is going to be Jacob McCall. And he is uh, on this drive. He's coming up big for his Mexico City offense here with his second catch here on this drive. And again, it's another out route for Jacob McCall that's getting that, that eight to nine yards and then cutting out, getting to the sidelines and get, breathing that separation air for Wilson to throw it. So another key third down conversion for them. 
first and ten as they hand the ball off to Phoenix Jones. He has an opening on the right-hand side. He could. Oh, I thought he was going to go uh, further than that, but he got tackled right around the seven-yard line before he's tackled. Uh, but a big play to get that run off the right-hand side. Yeah, that's the first big run for Phoenix Jones so far in this game, and that gets him inside goal line territory. Um, so, again, Mexico City trying to dominate this this possession time here with this long, played-out drive and kind of tire out that Fort Worth defense so that they can kind of uh, get to them in that second half, perhaps, when they get a little bit more tired. Looks like uh, Wilson didn't like what was called, so he changed the play. Has an opening, and it turns Easy. out to be a good call. What a play as number 10, Jason Barley, gets his touchdown, his first one of the season. And we are yet again one point away from being tied up. And it's the old reliable out route as they went inside the 10-yard line. So that's about a six, uh, a medium, I would say a medium out route on that one, a six, seven-yard out cut getting to the sidelines. And again, when you're a quarterback like that and you see an out route, you got to throw that as soon as the cut happens because you want to give your receiver space to get that extra run on the sidelines, which uh, Bartley only needed an extra yard or two, but still great throw from Wilson and a great job by Mexico City to dominate the time and get back in this game. As Cole Varner is on to attempt the extra point, snaps down, kick is up, and it's good. And once again, here in early in the second quarter, we are tied up once again at 14-all. Proving so far that this game is going to be a close one all the way through. Yeah, basically it's on the, def uh, on the offense is essentially who's going to blink first. Uh, as we now have a tie game here, uh, Johnny Reno is going to have to respond in his own way. So far, Fort Worth's done pretty well with their drives. Can they keep going with this one? As the kick is away and returned from the end zone, but he's going to run it out up the middle, and he has an opening. Watch he out. Counts. He could go all the way. One man to beat all the way down, and he's going to get tackled, but not before he gets inside Mexico City territory. All the way down to the 38-yard line, Kate Stevens has got some wheels. Yeah, you give you give enough space for Kate Stevens, and he's going to drive by a bunch of your special teams players. It, it, it took one guy to stop him, and that was the legendary Jeffrey Daggs himself to get uh, Kate Stevens to stop on his tracks. But what a great field uh, a play here for Johnny Reno. Only 38 yards needed. As they set up first down on their... Uh, play on their on this drive uh, as he gets it out to the uh, two yard gain and Jason Williams with a catch out in the flats to set up second and eight. Yeah, and it looks like they're just wanting to go a little bit slow here, kind of go uh, get Jason Williams going a little bit more here. Even though he's only he's already got sixty yards on five rushing attempts here, uh, nonetheless uh, a, a decent start for this drive. First and 10, and Johnny Reno back to throw. Wow. He's got made up the middle, and he's got a touchdown. Wow. What is this young man doing as a rookie right now? Third passing touchdown this time back to Twins crew, and they retake the lead in quick fashion. I'm pretty sure in that draft war room when he was calling Johnny Reno, I'm pretty sure he told them, I will make a man out of you. Johnny Reno looking like an absolute boss already here, finding the wide open Mike Twinsker on a great post route to the middle of the field. And he's already got three touchdowns in this first half. He has been practically almost flawless in this game. Like, this is what, this is what dreams are made of here. Dreams are made of indeed, and he's doing it in front of his home crowd, which makes it that much more special. Amelia Rose now on for the extra point as the kick is down, and he, she gets it away without any pressure, and it's good, and Fort Worth has scored 21 points in uh, basically a quarter and two minutes worth of action, a little over, but this young man, this rookie, Johnny Reno, making believers out of all of us here in the SFL that this might be their franchise quarterback moving forward. It's it's just unbelievable. It's just the, the composure that he's having, the accuracy that he's getting out there. It's, it's an amazing first half to start his career. As this one is returned uh, right up the middle, and uh, unfortunately Nick Lockett didn't have as much luck as uh, Twinscrew did on the kickoff before him. 
uh, but uh, returns it up to the 29 yard line. And as we move further into this game here, uh, Brett, um, it's going to be uh, what to watch for, I think, is if this uh, Mexico City uh, offense is going to be able to match score for score with this high power, what is high power so far, uh, Fort Worth offense. As uh, Wilson gets his, uh, gets his man McCall off to the right-hand side for a nice four-yard gain. Yeah, and and McCall's being uh, really reliable in this in this first half for Mexico City, just to get closer and closer down uh, field with every drive that Mexico City gets here. So we've seen a lot of him. Um, are we going to get uh, more calls possibly to Jason Bartley or uh, or even Mike Daggs? We haven't seen a lot of Mike Daggs yet. Yeah, Mike Daggs, I think he only has one catch so far, uh, but that was way early in this game. And it's that pass was dangerous by Wilson. And uh, that is tipped away and incomplete, tipped by Nacho Sicario uh, with a nice defensive player there. And again, it looks like they were looking at Jacob McCall on that th on, on that throw. And again, it's that, that six to eight yard out route. And Sicario this time kind of recognizes where that ball's heading and just gets his hand out to just stretch and kind of deflect the ball away to, to force a third down on this drive. As they get a third and five here, uh, that was Matt Wilson's first incompletion of this ball game. But uh, as the uh, third and five here, and Matt Wilson back to throw, and he has his man, but I don't think they're going to catch it in bounds. And no, they're going to call that one out of bounds incomplete. Jason Bartley couldn't keep his foot in bounds. It's going to bring up fourth. Yeah, that throw was a little bit too late from Matt Wilson there as uh, uh, Bartley was trying to keep himself in bounds that whole time, and it just didn't work out. And uh, another big stop from this Fort Worth defense before, they could, before Mexico City could get anything going, and um, they could really make some damage on this ensuing drive. As they are here to punt this one away Mexico City is George Amy back to punt this one returned uh, at about the 34 yard line uh, I'm sorry yeah brought up to about the 34 yard line by uh, Kate Stevens uh, and uh, that is where Fort Worth is going to start yet another drive um, yeah uh, it Johnny Reno is having himself a game so far and what kind of confidence he might be having if he can get another score to put them up two scores here in the second quarter. As they hand the ball off to Jason Williams and that's still going to be a loss of a yard this time. The tackle made by uh, Dexter Jackson and make up second and long. Yeah, as much as Johnny Reno's having a great day so far, you still have to find balance within your offense because eventually, or even not, uh, sometimes uh, passing games can like get a grinding halt. So if you can get Williams going, this will be great. Reno back to throw. He's got a deep wow. throw over the middle. He's got it over the middle. He's got a catch. And he's all the way down to the 16-yard line. And I believe number 88, Stephen Hacker. Making his first appearance in this ball game with a huge reception. Yeah, that's the, the safeties for Mexico City are just not having a great time right now. As uh, you can see, they're getting beaten over the top uh, a couple times at this point. Uh, a few from uh, we saw Charlie Baker in the first quarter, and this time Stephen Hacker finds an open spot to get himself a big catch. They're giving him 51 yards on that one as they flip the field in one play. And Johnny Reno picking up where he left off last drive as he's back to throw once again. Has a man over off to the right-hand side. Completed pass. Another six-yard gain. And this time, it's going to be Kate Stevens once again with a little short one, but setting up second and short. Yeah, and it's, it's a balance of throwing from Johnny Reno as he'll get himself around the 175 mark to, to get halfway through this second quarter. And uh, it's it, and it's been a share a shared kind of uh, sh uh, sh shared sharing. That sounds great, Brett. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it, everyone's getting involved in this. As they hand the ball off this time to Jason Williams, and he's going to have. Oh, I thought he had enough for the first down, but they're going to call that oh. short by about half a yard. As uh, 
they're saying he couldn't fall forward to get that first down, but I think that's worth the challenge flag. Uh, the the aggressive non-coach in me wants to throw that red flag because that's a very favorable spot for Mexico City, but now they're third and inches. Yeah, third and inches here on the five-yard line, but I oh, guess they easy. assume. I guess they assume when you're moving the ball like Johnny Reno and company is right now, you don't need uh, need that red flag just yet. As Jason Williams runs it right up the middle and gets all the way down to about the goal line before he's tackled. Yeah, and Jason Williams had a ton of space down the middle of the, the basically that middle of that uh, pile there. Great job by the offensive line of Fort Worth just to push uh, the, the entire Mexico City defensive line down and give that space, uh, basically almost get to the end zone as well. So this has been a very promising drive for Fort Worth once again. And we'll see if they can get a score here on this play as Johnny Reno is under center. They hand the ball off and too easy. Too easy. Jason Williams with yet another score for Fort Worth. And they're gone up by 13 points now, 27 to 14 here in the middle of the second quarter. And you saw the spin move there to kind of add a little bit of flourish to that run. And, and like you said, it was way too easy for Jason as so William, again, the offensive line stepping up huge uh, as uh, Amelia Rose has got the extra point the snap is down kick is up and it splits the uprights and Fort Worth here with about five and a half minutes to go in the first half has a two score lead over Mexico City I don't think anybody saw this happening uh, when we first started this game yet uh, Mexico City uh, just trying to find their way here in this first half to keep this one close. As Amelia Rose kicks this one away, returned from about the 10-yard line all the way, uh, right up the middle and gets to about the 29-yard line. Uh, Nick Lockett returns that one, and that is uh, to the 29, and that's where Mexico City uh, Matt Wilson and company will start this next drive. Yeah, for Mexico City, it's it's not time to panic yet. It's not time to panic at all. You still have five and a half left in this second quarter. You've got the entire second half. We've already seen throughout this first week, especially on Sunday, 17-plus point comebacks. So this, this is nothing so far. Absolutely. They're not out of it yet for sure by any stretch. As they do hand the ball off to Phoenix Jones, however, and Jones only gets a gain of one on that play, and that is going to be Joey Schwent there on the tackle to bring him down for a short game. Yeah, they're still trying to get uh, Phoenix Jones going a little bit here. They they love the run game, and they like to get Phoenix Jones his yards, but right now the defensive line for Fort Worth is doing their job and stopping him. And that's going to be an offsides penalty uh, free play, which uh, will be a good thing for Mexico City because that one falls incomplete as uh, Golden Dino t uh, bats that one down, but uh, free five yards here, Brett. Yeah, just a, a little bit uh, too too jumpy, I guess you could say, uh, for Fort Worth. Kind of saw kind of saw Red a little bit too early and wanted to kind of get get to uh, Wilson or Jones as quickly as possible, but uh, a little bit too early means five yards against you, and Mexico City has a little bit better field position. As they come out here with a uh, I formation uh, jumbo set once again with the I formation behind Wilson. Second and four now after the penalty. Hands the ball oh. right in the middle and it should, uh, Jones just shoulder checks that poor defender and bulls over him uh, to gain that first down on that play. Uh, I believe one of her fellow broadcast mates says, uh, to the shadow realm you go, Adam Leach, as Phoenix Jones barrels him down to cross the first down boundary and give Mexico City a new set of downs. And that's what you need to do to get Phoenix Jones going. He needs to get those big trucks through, and he needs to get some yards, and uh, then the Mexico City offense can start getting going again. As Matt Wilson sets up in the gun here on first down, has a man off to the right, and finds uh, Jacob McCall for another catch. McCall's been a little bit quiet lately, uh, but gets a nice uh, five yards there on that first down play. 
I would say McCall's been fairly quiet over the last couple drives, only because Wilson's trying to throw to his other targets. We saw Jason Bartley a couple times. But uh, when you have the old reliable SFL out route, you're going to get open and you're going to get a couple yards regardless. As they set up in an offset eye formation this time, Matt Wilson hands the ball off to the halfback. I'm sorry, to the fullback, Ray Bentley, just trying to muscle his way down to the first down and comes out about a yard short. And it obliterates E.K. Vincent on the way as well as the first man that he uh, met contact with and just uh, burrowed his shoulder down and got the extra yards needed. And now it's a third and one from Mexico City. Again, Mexico City loves these third down situations. Flip back formation right up the middle trying to get the wow. first down. And Ray Bentley is not going to get there. Number 55 for Fort Worth. Uh was in there on the tackle. That's E.K. Vincent uh, tackling Ray Bentley. You know, turnabout fair play, stopping him short this time uh, to set up a fourth down and punt. Yeah. And it looks like oh, they're going to go for it. They might go uh, for it. They might. They, they are. Snapped it. They snapped it. He has a first oh. down and more. And that is going to be Phoenix Jones with a good five or six yard gain to set up a new set of downs. That was a big call for this Mexico City offense. I like the gutsy play calling there. If you, you usually see, uh, especially in the first half, if you see that offense out in fourth down, it's usually just looking to make the uh, uh, the defense jump. But this time, Ramos Lynn made the right choice in just letting Phoenix Jones go, and it gave him enough space for the first down. Matt Wilson back to throw. One-handed catch, nicely done for a six-yard gain. That is going to be... The tight end, Mike Daggs, making it look easy out there with the one-handed catch on first down. Yeah, that's what Hall of Famers do, my friend, and they just get those easy easy one-handed catches. Uh, I, some, in some days, I aspire to be Mike Daggs myself, but amazing start to this first down drive. Second and four here from the 38-yard line. He hands that one right to middle, and Ray Bentley, that is going to be a first down Uh what a play. Yeah, it's, it's that newfound confidence now for Mexico City, uh, especially in this drive. It looked like uh, on that third down stop from Fort Worth that uh, everything kind of halted. But after that fourth down conversion, everything has been uh, roses for them. And as we hit the two-minute warning, Mexico City is down 14, but trying to drive uh, might be crunch time for him, so to speak. And SFL crunch time. Uh, is a new show coming up here, Brett. Do you have a hot take? Want to show your appreciation for the SFL or show some love to your teammates? The league's new show, SFL Crunch Time, wants to hear from you. Post a video on Twitter with your hot take or shout out and use the hashtag SFL Crunch Time and you may just appear on the show this week. Want more details? Direct message Josh Circle on Discord. We'll see you in Crunch Time. And as Phoenix Jones comes away with a nice eight yard gain, Helps uh, Mexico City out in crunch time as we come around the last two minutes of this half. Well, I, especially through this first half, I already know that I have a couple of hot takes myself, but I'll leave those by until uh, I see I see a few more weeks uh, in in the system here. But uh, good first down play. Absolutely. As Matt Wilson's back to throw, has plenty of time, finds his man, and that is going to be completed. That is going to be Jacob McCall with yet another catch. Uh, McCall quietly having a good day so far uh, as they got it now inside the red zone. McCall with exactly 100 yards receiving on six receptions. Yeah, I struggled to get 68 uh, this week, and he already has 100. Uh, we won't talk about that. But as uh, <laughs> as Matt Wilson is back to throw once again, and uh, Jason, uh, Jason Bartley uh, with the reception, Gets another six-yard gain off to the left-hand side. Um, yeah. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, everything's looking much better on this Mexico City drive. Again, after that fourth down conversion, it just feels like it's a whole different Mexico City team. They're, they're getting what they want, which is, which is huge for them as we dwindle down to almost a minute to go. And Matt Wilson back to throw once again. Has another receiver this time. Oh, and he couldn't Ooh. stay in bounds. He might have went in the end zone if he would have stayed in bounds, but... Uh, uh, Bentley just uh, couldn't stay in bounds and went out of bounds at the four. 
I don't know. I might be arguing that uh, Bentley didn't even get to the first down line, but it's a tough call to say from up here in the booth just because of how far we are away from the field. So they're going to give them the first down here. That's a fresh set. And now they have three tries, maybe even four to get to the end zone. As Milt Wilson back to throw, too easy. easy. He's got the tight end, Mike Daggs, for his first touchdown of the season. And... Mexico City cuts this lead down to eight points. Yeah, and uh, that's what you see from Mike Daggs. It's just that easy flat route for for him, as you can see, just getting to the sidelines. And Aiden Davis was uh, pretty – or not Aiden Davis, Adam Leach. Uh, excuse me, I'm mixing up my players here. But uh, Adam Leach had the good recognition, was just a little bit too late on covering Daggs. Uh, but nonetheless, Daggs is in the end zone once again in his career. And uh, as you said, it dwindles down the lead. And it could be down to seven points now as Cole Varner is hit in for the extra point. The snap is down. It was low snap. I thought that wow. might be blocked, and it was. What a bad snap that was. Just bobbled by the... The holder and the, the defense got there to block that extra point. Yeah, you you give you give any special teams enough time, uh, uh, especially after a snap and when you bobble it, it. There's gonna there's gonna be a couple blocks from here on out, and we've seen this a couple times already this season. So uh, those those backup placeholders they need to get ready. Absolutely, they might need uh, some practice on the sidelines in case that continues to happen. As Kate Stevens runs this one. Uh, up to about the 21-yard line. Uh, what I'm worried about for Mexico City now in this case, uh, this uh, rookie, uh, Johnny Reno, has been having himself a game. Uh, could they have left too much time on the clock for them to make a, a nice drive of, of their own before halftime? Well, let's see. They've got 79 yards and 50 seconds. They'll have to make some deep plays. Deep plays, but they do have all three timeouts. It's Reno is back in the gun. Looks over the middle, tipped away, and incomplete. Ooh. That was dangerous throw. Looked like there was one receiver there for about three or four, uh, three or four uh, defenders there. As Jeffrey Dags uh, tips this one away, and Dags, uh, just a little side note: if he gets two interceptions today, he'll be breaking a record, I believe. Yeah, he's gonna, he's going to be pre he's already pretty close to the record here, and two interceptions will do it. Uh, but that play there again, Stephen Hacker was looking to uh, go over the safeties, but this time they recognized it and stopped him on his tracks. Second and ten now from the twenty-one yard line, hands the ball off to Jason Williams. Has an opening on the right hand side. He could as he nice. falls his blocker and gets some speed, but he couldn't outrun the defenders. And Fort Worth is going to call timeout. But they do get that ball all the way out to the 47-yard line. Huge play of 26-yard run by Jason Williams. Yeah, and that's the big play that they wanted on this drive to get that momentum going to see if they can score any points as they kind of as as they almost get to midfield, maybe even crossing it a little bit there. Uh, Jason Williams having a fantastic first half. He's already up to 94 yards on just his 10th carry. So watch out for him. Both sides of the offense have been really clicking for Fort Worth. Run and pass uh, so far in this first half is working for them so far. Jason, I'm sorry, Johnny Reno back in the gun. Back to throw. Has the man over to the right. And I thought that was going to be picked, but that's going to be caught. And that is another timeout taken by Fort Worth. As that's going to be Mike Twinscrew with a big catch over the right-hand side for a first down. And that has to be one of the reasons why Fort Worth was gunning for Mike Twinscrew in free agency. Absolutely mossed uh, Ben Charbs on that catch. Just uh, very Brett Killian-esque, if I can say myself, on that catch. Just uh, amazing jumping reach, getting it over the defender. And the big key here, Fort Worth is in field goal territory. Field goal territory and looking to add points before the half as Johnny Reno is back under center. Plenty of time, I thought at first, but that's going to be batted away and incomplete as that was number 77 for Mexico City, Dan Tritz, uh, with, the, uh, with the pressure and the bat down. Yeah, but when you have like a two, three step drop uh, like that, you have to be really quick because you never know when one of these interior linemen kind of get past uh, their counterparts. So you got to throw it quick and Reno ha uh, just didn't throw it in time, essentially. Second and 10 now 
Uh, Johnny Reno has time to throw. Has his man on the left, and that's wow. going to be another touchdown. Johnny Reno, this this rookie is just proving so much to all of us tonight as he finds yet another touchdown, and they go up by 14 once again as Stephen Hacker gets another touchdown. I wonder if our, our head of stats, uh, Mark Lopez, had four first-half touchdowns by a rookie in his bingo card there. Just an amazing start to this season for Johnny Reno as the Eclipse is already 230 yards on near 80% completion. Like We've seen a lot of rookies kind of struggle in their first game and then kind of develop themselves uh, down the season to uh to become that sfl quality quarterback but johnny reno is already there absolutely just showing off tonight as Amelia rose uh gets this extra point up and through and retakes a 15 point lead with only 23 seconds left but brett these uh maybe these rookies are coming into the league a little bit stronger though this season because earlier today we saw a uh, scar patterson and company uh, with San Diego come away with a victory over uh, for, uh, Florida Storm. And Florida Storm was a team that made it to the championship game last season. Yeah, you, you never know with the SFL. That's the big thing. That's why it always makes it uh, intriguing every season. You just never know what's going to happen from each from week to week. And as Mexico City brings this one out to about the 29-yard line, you got to imagine they're going to try to uh, be aggressive here with only 19 seconds left, but all, all three timeouts still remaining. Uh, but where does this Mexico City uh, secondary go from here as they – what kind of message is our coaching staff going to give them as they go into the locker room? It's, it's, it's simple for me. Take a breath and recognize who's going over you. As they do throw the ball out to the flat to Phoenix Jones, and they're going to try to go hurry up instead of calling timeout. Uh, I would just call timeout there for sure, but uh, clock's ticking down with only three seconds left, and now they do mm. call timeout. Uh, poor, poor clock management by Mexico City. Only three seconds left. They could wait until then to take a timeout. Uh, probably going to try to go deep here on one last play before halftime. Uh, yes, a very rare uh, instance of poor clock management from Mexico City. Uh, instead of taking the timeout right after the the catch and 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 down. Um, they instead kind of go hurry up and they realize that they're running out of time before they can kind of really set themselves up. So they force themselves to call a timeout with just three seconds left. And it looks like they just want to run this up the gut perhaps and just get to the, get to the locker room to, to yeah. get to halftime. Maybe realizing they're too far away for a Hail Mary attempt as they just hand the ball off here to uh, Phoenix Jones, but he could go all the way. Maybe this was a good. Oh, he fumbles oh it. Lord. Oh, no. And that is the last play of the half. And it looks like right when Mexico City might have called the exact right play before the halftime break, uh, Fort Worth just knocks the ball loose out of Phoenix Jones' hands. And that is how this half is going to end here, Brett. Yeah, and a great job from JL Browning to kind of just fist the uh, fist the ball just with a, a nice punch from behind and get that ball loose. Even even if it was the last play of the half, it's it's good to end on a high note for this Fort Worth team. As we reach the halftime break here in Fort Worth, it is the Toros taking the surprising 15 point lead, 35 to 20. Uh, a lot of times here, you would see this as a final score, Brett, but uh, we're seeing this in the first half. Uh, of play. I mean, what a game we're seeing here uh, between these two teams. Fort Worth, uh, uh, led by their rookie quarterbacks, just having himself a night right now. Yeah, if we continue at this pace, we're going to see 110 points scored here, Nate, which uh, as a wide receiver is like a fever dream if you see 110 points being scored by both teams. But nonetheless, the, the big difference here is has been essentially the complete work of Fort Worth's offense. Yes, we can talk about Johnny Reno as we have throughout this half. 232, 13 to 17 on his passes, four touchdowns, a, a QBR of pretty much almost perfection at this point, 157 and a half. Um, but you also got to think of Jason Williams, 94 yards on 10 attempts. Like he's he's done his fair share of, of bringing this offense as well, along with that rushing touchdown. But the main thing for Mexico City has to be shoring up those safeties 
Uh, like I said earlier, just get when when you get to that halftime talk, talk to those safeties. They basically say, breathe, recognize who's going over you, which uh, most of the time has either been Baker, Twin Screw, or Hacker. Those three guys, if you can shut them down, you're going to get back in this game because um, – Mexico City offensively is doing everything right. They have 20 points in this first half. They just have to make sure that the defense is ready to go for the second half, and they'll be back in this game. No problem. Yeah, and, and uh, this this uh, Fort Worth uh, team doing their part and making this uh, quarterback's debut uh, a one to remember for sure, especially doing this at their home stadium. Uh, these fans are loving every second of it as we see that last play there before halftime of the fumble uh, by Phoenix Jones. Uh, the only turnover we saw there in that, uh, in that first half, uh, Brett. Yeah, both quarterbacks have been playing really safe and really efficient football so far to limit their turnovers. No interceptions between these two guys and, uh, and eight touchdowns between the two. So uh, just an amazing, uh, amazing game from these two quarterbacks. As Mexico City kicks this one away and it is returned up the middle by Kate Stevens out to about the 25 yard line as we welcome you back inside the booth here for the start of the third quarter. Uh, Fort Worth just keep doing what they're doing pretty much, right, Brett? Yeah, that's, just, that's essentially it. I believe they've uh, pretty much scored on every drive they've, that they've had so far in this game. And right now, th they've got all the time in the world. So I would I would like to see maybe a little, more, a little bit more action from Jason Williams. Back to throw is Reno, and his protection has been good all day long, but that one is going to be incomplete as Charlie Baker couldn't grasp that ball uh, before the defender knocked uh, knocked it out. Uh, ben Charbs there with the defensive play. Yeah, and you can see already on this first play, the safeties kind of drop back a little bit deeper, knowing that they like to they like to try to beat those safeties inside. And uh, Charbs, just basically right guy at the right time, stopping uh, Charlie Baker on his tracks before he could get the catch and now forces a second and 10. Second and 10 from the 25 yard line. Uh, Reno back uh, three, three backs in the backfield uh, here with only one wide. Uh, doesn't like what he sees, so he changes the play at the line, uh, throws it out to the flats. And Jason Williams is going to have a game of about four yards to set up a third and medium. Uh, this would be a big stop here for Mexico City uh, coming out of the halftime break if they can get a stop here on third down. Yeah, and a big, and a big first tackle uh, of his career for Matt Anderson as well. Uh, definitely want to chalk that up and put that on, uh, on, a, on a frame so that you can remember it for the rest of your life. Highlight reel for sure to be clipped there as Reno goes deep over the right hand side and what a I thought he might have had a step on him there over the right hand side but number 23 gets his mitts on it uh, that's going to be Ben Charves making another play on the ball to make it fourth down and another big stop from Ben Charves uh to stay it's to stay with the receiver there you can see already just on this first drive here the safeties are playing a little bit more back and it, it's causing uh more difficult passes for johnny reno we've already seen two tough passes deflected out of the way so great job by this defense great job indeed as uh ray einhorn punts this one away i think i believe that's his first punt all game today uh, mm -hmm. But that is going to be returned up to about the 37 yard line of Mexico City by Nick Lockett. Uh, but for that to be the first punt of the day for for Fort Worth shows you what kind of game they're having here. Yeah, it's been an amazing game for Fort Worth. But nonetheless, this has to be some kind of momentum heading Mexico City's side to finally stop that that firepower offense and get Mexico City's offense back on the field. Handing the ball off here to Phoenix Jones, and he's going to have a gain of about eight yards. Having a uh, the average sure doesn't show it, but he's already got 87 yards. It doesn't seem like he's had that many run running yards. Yeah, and it's it's been a couple of long plays, and you have to remember that he got the that the last play of that half was was about to be a big play pr uh, prior to the fumble. So he's right. had an effective game so far, but aside from that, he's been relatively quiet. So this has been a big, uh, good job for the Fort Worth defensive line. 
second and eight here. Matt Wilson. And oh, that is going to be tipped. It probably should have been picked as he was trying to find the over the middle of his wide receiver, uh, Bartley. But Nash said, no, sir. That is going to be knocked away and incomplete. Yeah, you had uh, Delaney Nash. You had Aiden Davis. I believe there was Blake Prine in there as well to, to in that area to uh, – almost grab the interception but it gives mexico city another opportunity here again another third down which they they don't mind uh getting to back in the gun is matt wilson and he's going to get the catch there number uh for number 16 nick lockett but they're going to say that is short of the line again and that's going to bring a fourth down now what you're looking for if you mexico city at this point getting a three and out on their first drive after halftime yeah, it looked like they had one of the tight ends uh, a little bit more open down the field here, and it looks like they're going for fourth down this, again. This is interesting here. Early in the third quarter, 45-yard line, I think they might be doing a bait and switch. Yeah, they're looking, I don't they're think, looking yeah. to jump. They're looking I'm to not, see if they can jump. Yeah, I don't think they're going to snap this one. They're already down and, to four here. Brett, I don't know about you, but I hate this call, especially early in the third quarter, to take a timeout uh, to set up a fourth down punt. Uh, but what do you think about that? I Again, I think it's uh, – we've seen Fort Worth jump once in this first half, so I can understand the logic on it. But when when you're down 15, you need all the timeouts that you can, especially when it comes to the fourth quarter because um, it, sometimes the comeback game can just be slow and methodical and, and just a grind. But uh, nonetheless, you, you could you could flip a coin on that one whether or not it's a good choice. Absolutely, as George Jamie is back to punt this one away, back to Fort Worth, uh, back to Kate Stevens. He gets this one at about the 22 and brings it up to about the 25 yard line. <clears throat> Visit the SFL website at simulationfl.net for links to apparel from Sector Six, the official apparel provider of the SFL. And SFL mini helmets from 97 Sports Promotions. Sector 6 features replica team jerseys and completely customized jackets, flags, t-shirts, and more. Get the gear the fans wear with Sector 6, 97 Sports Promotions, and the SFL. As Fort Worth comes out on this drive, it looks like he's going to get stopped for no gain. Spins away from a defender and comes away with a huge 8-yard gain for Jason Williams. Yeah, basically turn a, a net negative yard uh, play to turn that into eight yards. Basically, Williams saying, get off my feet, boy, and keeps going for that eight-yard gain. Just uh, a great awareness and good agility to get that defender off his feet. Can't say enough about how this offense is playing for Fort Worth, uh, running game and passing, making this uh, setup easier for Johnny Reno. As this time he hands the ball off to Jason Williams once again, and – he is going to have a first down as they get a good uh, about five-yard gain to get that first down. Yeah, that stretch play has become uh, very big for this Fort Worth offense as Jason Williams has had a bunch of space on those stretch plays throughout this game so far. We saw, we saw it quite a bit in the first quarter, especially uh, when he had that big 30-yard uh, run. And this time he gets more than enough for the first down and then a new set for Fort Worth. And that's going to be an offsides penalty. Reno back to throw for a free play. And that re wide receiver just just knocks the defender over. Steven Hacker, that defender has a family. Take it easy on him. I think they're going to decline this penalty. Yeah, easily decline this one. Steven Hacker uh, was saying, I want my yards because he's got 75. And I think he has a little bit of a battle between him and his teammate, Mike Quinscrew, on who's going to get the more the most yards after week one here. And it's going to be a close battle here as uh, Twinscrew is at 93 and now Hacker's at 85. Yeah, it's going to be back and forth, I think. Uh, Steven Hacker not wanting to get shown up by the newbie. He Even though he's not... Uh, a newbie in the league he's a newbie to this team and and hacker wants to make sure he gets his yards for sure uh, as johnny reno back under center i uh, was split back to the backfield and too wide on the bottom of the screen but they're going to hand this ball off to jason williams and that's going to be just enough for the first down to move the sticks yeah and it looks like this third quarter they're going to have a heavy dose of jason williams and uh they're going to play the mexico city game here as uh, we saw a lot from them last season here kind of just dominate ball time as much as they can and then run down this clock to give Mexico City as little chance as possible to come back. 
And that is not a good sign from the city as Robert Garrett Jr., the veteran that he is, Johnny Reno finds him over the middle and yet another first down for this Fort Worth team. Yeah, and it looked like Zach Daggs uh, almost had the perfect coverage on Robert Garrett Jr., but it just still manages to find the hands of the Cowboy. And once again, another big first down for Fort Worth. First down for Reno and company. I behind. I set behind him. Reno back to throw. Plenty of time. And over the oh, middle. And that oh. one's going to be picked off. That is Reno's first mistake of this season, of this game. And it is going to be number 44. Yes, it is. Jeffrey Daggs with that interception ties the record for that interception. Yeah, that's a, a big one there. That's going to be interception number 66 in his career, and I believe 66 is one of the better numbers in hockey as well if uh, you're talking to a fellow Canadian here. So congrats on him to, for tying it. Absolutely amazing uh, read. And li like like I said before, the safeties are doing a great job now holding back and recognizing where the, the ball's heading, and now it's starting to tie, turn the tide for Mexico City. As Mexico City gets the ball here uh, to start this drive. And Phoenix Jones gets about five yards there to set up a second and five. Yeah, and uh, that's that's what you want from Mexico City there. It's a, a nice five-yard first down. Kind of get the clock going. Kind of get the momentum started on that offense. And it all starts with Phoenix Jones. They love to start with Phoenix Jones and then kind of get their way around. And they're bunching up here. As they hand the ball off this time right up the middle to uh, Phoenix Jones once again, trying to follow his offensive uh, blockers. Uh, but that is going to be only a three-yard gain to set up a third and short. Uh, but I, I still think your playbook is wide open here to try to get this first down. Well, exactly. It's, it's going to be wide open. You can run it up the gut with Ray Bentley or Phoenix Jones. They've got a shotgun set here. They can go flats uh, like they did in the first quarter. Could get some positive yardage out of it. As Wilson's back to throw, gets his uh, gets the ball out to Ray Bentley, and that's going to be a first down out to the 46-yard line. Uh, no three and out here, uh, luckily, for this offense from Mexico City, and that's going to set up a first down. Yeah, kind of a polar opposite of what they tried in the in the first half here, and they went with the exact same guy. Uh, there's, there's Ray Bentley with a nice catch on the on the flats and gets himself enough space to kind of run himself past the first yard line uh, uh, boundary. As they hand the ball off this time to Ray Bentley and gets a f uh, good five-yard uh, pickup uh, to set up a second and medium. Uh, really quick, Brett, uh, I've got an eye on that other game between the Glory and Queen City. Remind me again if you had a touchdown this week for Vancouver. Uh, I did have one, yes. Okay. Well, I, I matched your touchdown today with a pick. <laughs> As they get the ball out to the flats to Phoenix Jones, uh, once again, uh, first and 10, uh, good job by Mexico City. They're, they're getting the ball out to these, uh, to these running backs and fullbacks and uh, doing so out here in the flats uh, really has got them moving down the field so far. Hey, you can't be watching your game while calling another one. That's just, that's too many eyes. You just focus on this one, buddy. I, I've got it on this game. Uh, Mexico City and Fort Worth are both in this in this tough South Division, so I am for sure uh, paying attention to this one as uh, uh, Phoenix Jones goes down and gets a seven-yard gain down to Fort Worth's 36-yard line. And, and uh, here, as they set up in the jumbo set, Matt Wilson under center, eyes set behind him. Phoenix Jones gets the handoff, and that's going to be no gain on that play. They're going to give him uh, forward progress, but maybe a lot, half yard loss before uh, he's tackled there by JL Browning. Yeah, and that's a big that's a big stop because those those running backs were starting to uh, get it going a little bit here with that forward momentum, and he, Browning basically stopped them on its tracks. But they've got three backs here, so it might be another run either to Bentley or Jones. And they do hand the ball off to Phoenix Jones with a nice hole right out to the left side. And he's going to pick up a nice first down all the way to the 26-yard line. Nice 10-yard run right off tackle to set up a first down. 
Yeah, anything you can do, I can do better. It looks like uh, Mexico City went with their own stretch play uh, for Phoenix Jones as he gets some nice space on the left side of the field to get that first down and then some. And now uh, Mexico City in well in field goal territory for Cole Varner, but they're going to want more than just the three. Absolutely. They're looking for six right here for sure, but they can the ball off here to Phoenix Jones. And gets absolutely nowhere as E.K. Vincent just uh, plugs up the middle and stops him for no, uh, maybe a half yard on that play. Yeah, and, and Fort Worth really has to focus on uh, what, re what went right defensively in that first half. And that was basically limiting the play of Jones and uh, Bentley and kind of forcing Matt Wilson to throw to those young receivers. Play action fake by Wilson. And he finds his receiver over the middle. That is going to be enough for a first down. And Jacob McCall, first time we've called his name here in the third quarter, I believe, as, as he gets a nice pick up there. Yeah, and those young receivers are getting those catches. Jacob McCall once again getting involved in this one. That's number seven on his reception count uh, just in this game alone. He's had plenty of work in this game. As they hand the ball off to Ray Bentley this time, and he goes right up the gut for a four-yard game before he's tackled. Uh, not, but now here, uh, Brett, they're inside the 10-yard line. Yeah, they're, they're in goal line territory here. It's a second and six. This has been all positive momentum for Mexico City to start coming back in this game after they uh, the offense kind of stalled it a little bit. Uh, for Fort Worth, they need, they need a couple big stops here. Back in the gun is Wilson. Look over the middle, and he's got his man. Oh, but not going to call a touchdown. Oren Darby with the reception, but not going to get his first touchdown this time, uh, or actually of his career on that play. Yeah, that's a it's very close call for Oren Darby. Uh, getting himself a nice jumping catch and unfortunately landing behind the goal line. And a wow. And yeah, they hand the ball off here uh, to Phoenix Jones, and he's going to lose half a yard on that play as E.K. Vincent once again uh, a plug in. I'm sorry, that is J.L. Browning this time plugging up the middle, making sure he doesn't get anywhere. Yeah, J.L. Browning becoming a massive menace to that Mexico City offense as he gets number 11 on his tackle count, and he's just all, all over the place today. Wilson is trying to find a way to get this ball in the end zone as they hand the ball off to Bailey and that's going to be following his blockers right up the middle and a touchdown is scored and Mexico City drives the length of the field and gets six. Nice drive by them to get themselves right back in this one. And give that man touchdown number 95 in his career. You don't see a lot of running backs in the SFL uh, compile that many touchdowns throughout his career. But nonetheless, he adds another one to the list. And that is a big touchdown for Mexico City as they start climbing closer to Fort Worth's game here. So now another it's going to be 2-8. Sorry, there is another bobble snap, but that one is handled this time by Mesca City, and the kick is up and good by Cole Varner. So we have a eight-point game, 35-27, as we're about to close out the end of the third quarter here. 11 seconds left, and Cole Varner has the ball on the tee, about to kick this one away uh, to Fort Worth and Cade Stevens waiting down there on it. We saw Cade Stevens have a big return earlier in this game to set up a good field position. See if Lightning can strike twice on this return as he receives it right around the two-yard line. Right at the middle, turns out to the left, and that's only going to be out to the 26-yard line. And that's where Reno and company uh, will uh, set up shop here uh, to start this next drive. Uh, as Reno uh, tries to shake off the interception he threw uh, a little bit earlier in this game, setting up shop on a first and 10 from the 20. 27, 26 yard line. Uh, under center is Reno. And he hands the ball off to Jason Williams. And that's going to be a good six yard game before he's tackled. And that'll do it for the third quarter of play. Get your fours up in chat, ladies and gentlemen. You don't want to miss the finish of this game. Toro's up 35 27. You're watching the SFL here on Twitch. Day right there. 
Nate Hall and Brett Solberg back in the booth with you. Jerry DeGond and Phil Koss in the stat truck doing an awesome job, I might add, making us look smarter here in the booth as they hand the ball off to Jason Williams and doesn't get anywhere. Uh, maybe a half yard, but it's going to be third and short. Yeah, it was a it was a great uh, stuff from the linebacking and defensive line core. I, I want to give credit to Skylar Kingsley on uh, basically stuffing that middle of the field there, so um, Jason Williams couldn't get anything out of that. Back to throw is Reno has his man off to the left, tries to spin around is Jason Williams, but it, oh, they're oh. going to give him the first down. You got to think Mexico City is going to be challenging that one. I thought he was stopped short of the line to gain. But maybe they're giving him forward progress before he got smacked it backwards. I don't know if I want to challenge that if I'm Mexico City. They are going to do that. But if they decide the spot of the ball is correct, they're going to be down to one timeout in the fourth quarter while they're down. So this is a very risky challenge for them. Risky challenge indeed, but a pivotal call coming up here by R62. As he goes under the hood to look at this one. I'm not exactly sure. That first gonna, tackle. Yeah. yeah. He might be a half a yard short, I think, there on that play. Let's see what he says, though. I don't think that's the right spot to kind of focus on. I, I, on that first shed tackle, he looked like the ball was a little bit on line, but they're going to they're gonna overturn it. They are going to overturn it. Uh, looks like uh, he was almost a half yard to maybe a, a full yard short of the line to gain there on third down, bringing up fourth and inches from their own 36-yard line. And that is going to set up a punt by Ray Einhorn. Yeah, and I, I, I don't fault Fort Worth for just, you know, settling for a punt there. Uh, Ramos Lynn doing a great job uh, getting that challenge. Again, it's risky, but when you get it, you, you get it right, you get it right. Absolutely got it right that time. Fair catch called for by uh, Nick, Var I'm sorry, Nick Lockett this time. Uh, and Mexico City will start this drive from the... Uh, from their own 31 yard line uh apm music is unrivaled music to bring you bring your stories to life inspiring every production with the world's most robust and constantly refreshed music collection today of the art technology and world class, class customer service apm music is the official soundtrack of the sfl to explore their library and to find the perfect tracks for your projects visit apmmusic.com for more details and J.L. Browning getting a nice stop there on that play, tackling, uh, tackling, uh, excuse me, Jason right. Williams before he get in. I'm sorry, uh, Ray Bentley. I'll try again. Phoenix Jones before he could get anywhere. That is all good, Nate. I've had my mistakes already in this game here. It's week one. We got to get those, we got to get the rust out. Absolutely. As uh, Wilson is back to throw. Oh, and that back. looked like it could have been picked off. This time, J.L. Browning looked like he was in there. Maybe a couple of other uh, defenders as well. But dangerous throw trying to find Jason Bartley over the middle. Yeah, I, I like the riskiness from Matt Wilson here. He's a 13-season veteran for a reason. He can get those throws out, but this time it's just deflected off. And J.L. Browning, I would say SFL's menace to society for week one already, almost getting interception along with his 12 tackles. Back to throw is Wilson, throws it on the run. What a play by him to escape the pressure and find his wide open receiver off to the right. Orain Darby with a nice gain to set up the first down. Yeah, and Orain Darby is going to be that quiet little mouse for this Mexico City offense. He's only 5'10", a buck 78, but if he can squeak his way through uh, secondaries like he has so far in this game, he's, he's going to get some big yards uh, out of this season, so a, a great catch from him. Yeah, and we're going to have to see how that five re five receiver set is going to work out for them this season as Wilson is back to throw uh, over off to the left-hand side, and that's going to be caught, and... That is going to be Jason Bartley with an, another catch to set up a second and short. And the reason I say that, uh, Brett, about uh, we'll have to see how it works out for him with a five wide, is they have another wide receiver that hasn't had his name called yet today. T.T. Crystal is another rookie that is on this uh, offense. And we'll have to see how they get him involved later on in the season uh, since we haven't had his name called yet as well. Uh, Phoenix Jones there going up the middle to get that first down. 
Yeah, I think the big thing a lot with rookies there is to see what uh, how they develop as a player um, as we get to like week six, week seven, week eight, because then becomes the separation of of those rookie wideouts. And you might see more of Crystal, maybe not this week, but maybe a little bit down the line. Matt Wilson back to throw on first down, finds his man Fe uh, Phoenix Jones uh, off to the left-hand side. That's going to be a four-yard gain. Uh but we, we mentioned earlier in this broadcast, Brett, how both of these squads have uh, a good number of rookies on their uh, team that we're highlighting. Uh, while we've got Mexico City here on, on offense, we've got uh, rookies Nick Lockett, uh, TT Crystal, and Ori Dar Darby, which we've mentioned already, uh, as Matt Wilson is back to throw. Gets another play, another big play off to the right-hand side. Uh, 81, that's going to be Jacob McCall with a nice play to set up a first down. Yeah, and another big out route for Jacob McCall. We've seen it a couple times now. He's gotten that, he had that deep, he had that deep uh, look in that first quarter um, for Mexico City. Now he's starting to play those medium games and he's starting to get away from his secondary members as, uh, as Aiden Davis looks to be a little bit uh, too far from... Um, from the call there, and it was just an easy catch and easy first down. Easy first down for him as they set up on the 21-yard line. Matt Wilson under center. Play action fake was a nice one there. He finds his man off the left-hand side. Man. His eyes wide open, and he's not going to make it into the end zone. Marked him down just outside the goal line, but Jacob McCall getting this team, uh, this Mexico City team set up for a first and goal. But what a play by Aiden Davis for Fort Worth. Knocking, uh, knocking him out of bounds uh, before he get in the end zone. And, and again, it's that out route that's been helping with McCall and getting open the the cuts that he's making, the changing of direction, that's just misdirecting that secondary, getting himself open for those big catches. That's been the main factor for his performance this week. As they hand the ball off this time to uh, Phoenix Jones, nowhere to go. Half a half yard loss on the play. And the second year, uh, Jeff Duffy there with the tackle, uh, second right. year with this Toro squad, but ninth in the league uh, coming over from Queen City. Yeah, and uh, ten and a half sacks from Jeff Duffy, and he's been relatively quiet in this game, so the offensive line is shoring up uh, the threats. And the ball off this time to Phoenix Jones. They're going to say he crossed the line. Touchdown, Phoenix Jones. Yeah, and that's another, what a play. That's a, that's another close one there, but I think the ball broke the goal line boundary, and this is going to be decision time for Mexico City. Are they going to go for two here? We see McCall they out. Are. It looks like they're yep. going to go for it. I don't think it's a decision at this point. It is the fourth quarter, but I would do the same thing if I were the coach at this point. Go for two, try to tie it up, because you know how hot Reno's been in this game. Oh, Throws it off to the right, and Phoenix Jones has it in the flats and just waltzes into the end zone to tie this one up at 35 apiece. Yeah, just making it easy there, Matt Wilson, getting himself a little bit extra space, kind of walking outside of his pocket, and then sees Phoenix Jones on the flat there, and right away... Mexico City gets that touchdown, gets the two touchdowns that they needed, as well as the two-point conversion to tie this game up. What a drive by Mexico City to two tie this game up with halfway got halfway through the fourth quarter now as Kate Stevens returns this one from the end zone. Gets a couple of nice blocks, but brings this one out to the 25-yard line. Uh, but it was 35 to 20 at one point, uh, Brett, uh, earlier in this half at halftime and this half uh, Reno has been pretty quiet so far. So what does he need to do to get, uh, get his uh, momentum back that he had early on? It's all about composure at this point. Now it's a tie game. That's back to zeros essentially with six and a half to go. Uh, I think they trying to go deep a little bit too much here. I think they need to go short. As they try to hand the ball off to Jason Williams, we see the stat line there, over 100 yards rushing, but nowhere to go that time, though. Half a yard loss as uh, Dexter Jackson comes in with the TFL. And it was immediately the, the linebackers basically blitzed the right, the right side of that offensive line, and Dexter Jackson yeah, getting to the spot to stop um, Jason Williams on his tracks. 
Another handoff for Jason Williams. Now this time he gets a gain of about five yards, but it's going to be third and six. And, and uh, Fort Worth has got to think about, uh, you know, maybe opening the playbook a little bit, uh, try to air it out to try to get this first down. I think if you're Fort Worth, if you want a reliable first down, you got to look at Robert Garrett Jr., but they're going to go four wide on this one with no tight end, I don't see. Yeah, I don't see one either. Uh, but uh, Reno back to throw from the gun over the middle, and that's going to be knocked away and incomplete as Dexter Jackson comes away with the tips pass. Uh, dangerous throw by Reno over the middle. Yeah, and in the span of about 15, 16, 17 minutes of uh, gameplay, Mexico City has completely flipped the script here, and all the momentum's on their side as now they forced once again for Fort Worth to punt the football away. And once they get this football back, they have an opportunity to, get, to take the lead for the first time since the first drive of this game. Yeah, what a job that would be if they could do that as uh, they punt this one, as Fort Worth punts this one away and a fair catch is made at the 40-yard line. And that is where Mexico City uh, will start this next drive with Matt Wilson and company. Uh, coverage of the SFL on Next Level Sports continues next Saturday, January 22nd. The London Knights will meet the Lone Star Glory across the pond in the UK. Home opener at 12.30 Eastern. Then it's a battle in the air as the Carolina Skyhawks meet the San Diego Mavericks at 2.45 p.m. Eastern. Bonus coverage includes Tulsa and Vegas and L.A. and Vancouver. Visit NLSC.com to find Next Level Sports in your area as that is a nice first down catch by Jason Bartley to set up a second and short. Yeah, and it's, again, that out route. Um, both Jacob McCall and Jason Bartley are doing a fantastic job just switching direction and that's that's been the key factor in the second half is that th those two receivers are getting themselves open. Jason Bartley, I, I think he only had two receptions in the first half, and now he's up to five on eight targets for 44 yards. As they hand the ball off to Phoenix Jones right up the middle, and he's going to gain about four yards that time before he gets the first down, uh, before he's tackled right there. But it's going to set up a new set of downs. Yeah, Mexico City's doing the right thing here, getting that, a key first down from a Phoenix Jones run up the gut, and they're shedding, they're shedding a little bit of clock here. If they can get a score out of this one, they're not going to leave Fort Worth a lot of time. And over the middle is that pass from Wilson to Mike Daggs. Mike Daggs, old reliable, getting a nice eight-yard gain uh, before he's tackled to set up a second and short at the 39. See, I don't know if Daggs would like you uh, calling him old or anything like that, but he is definitely reliable uh, yeah. as he gets another nice catch uh, with a nice eight-yard gain, and that's 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 what they rely on for him as a tight end to get those reliable catches and those nice uh, red zone touchdowns. I'm sure I'll hear about it on Wednesday as they hand the ball off to Phoenix Jones <laughs> right up the middle all the way down to the 31-yard line for eight yards this time. Uh, this drive has been a con constant uh, mix of just getting Phoenix Jones the ball and, and uh, throwing it to the tight end so far. Yeah, and it's, it's first down pass, second down run that's leading to another first down. And right now, Mexico City, I would say, almost in field goal territory here. I think Cole Varner could probably kick it from 48, but you still want to get closer and you still want to get that six. And Wilson back to throw. Oh! What a play! What a play by the defense for Fort Worth. He could go all the way. He's run down the sidelines, and he's wow. not. But what an interception by Frank Bernstein. He is one of the four rookies on this Fort Worth defense, getting his first interception of his career. And what a time to get it, and what kind of play. Congrats, young man. It, absolutely, you said it. What a what a fantastic time to get that interception. Mexico City had all the momentum getting into this fourth quarter here, and now they finally get something off of Matt Wilson, who has been uh, uber uh, deadly in this game, and he finally gets a pick out of him. And now Johnny Reno has an opportunity with three and a half left to go. Reno back to throw. Oh. Dangerous throw. Tries to find his his reliable tight end of Robert Gary Jr. Uh, but that defender was right there. I thought it could then be picked, but it falls incomplete. 
Yeah, and Ben Jarbs has definitely been a, an extremely effective safety in the second half here. He's already got his third deflection of this half, I would want to say here, just making sure he gets the key stops and stopping key receivers. I think it's important now for for uh, Johnny Rito to just play within himself, realize that he's got to take care of the ball as we get later stages into this game as they hand the ball off to Jason uh, Williams and it only gets two yards before being tackled right there by Dexter Jackson. Yeah, and there comes that veteran defense uh, coming in and shoring up uh, any gaps, trying to get open for Jason Williams. And this time, Dexter Jackson gets another key tackle for minimal gain. Third and eight here. Deep drop for Reno. Watch out. Deep throw over the middle. Whoa. And that oh. is going to be caught all the way down to the eight-yard line. And he finds none other than Mike Twinscrew with yet another big play over the middle deep. And Johnny Reno was starting to struggle a little bit here in the second half. But sometimes you can get out of your funk by getting the long pass down the middle of the field. And again, it's Mike Twinscrew with those big hands to catch it out of the air. Getting himself over the century mark this week um, and getting Fort Worth into prime territory. But do you think this might be too quick of a drive already for Fort Worth? I would definitely start bleeding this clock if I were Fort Worth. Uh, and I think that's what they're going to do here, it looks like, right now. Because you got to think, Mexico City only has uh, two timeouts left after that failed uh, uh, challenge earlier in this half as they swing the ball out to, uh, to Aaron Alexander in the flats for, for no gain on the play. But yeah, that as we reached a two-minute warning... Uh, I'll finish that thought, try to, when we come back, but catch your breath. You don't want to go anywhere for this finish, folks. It is tied up at 35 with only two minutes left. Don't go anywhere. But yeah, to finish that thought, uh, uh, Fort Worth definitely wants to start bleeding this clock here on this next set of plays to not let Mexico City have enough time to drive down the field as they hand the ball off to Jason Williams. And that's gonna be a loss of two yards to set up third and goal from the 11. Big play coming up here for this Mexico City defense. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's gonna be decision time for Fort Worth. It is third and goal. They're 11 yards away from pay dirt here. Are they gonna just settle to uh, forcing Mexico City to use their last time out? Or they're, are they gonna want uh, the glory here? Get the six points, get themselves enough, enough separation. Uh, and just get the lead back. Man, you would have thought I would have used that word glory, but it was you instead. Uh, as they <laughs> go back to pass, and uh, unfortunately for Reno and company, that's going to fall incomplete. Uh, nice play by the defense to set up a field goal attempt by Emilia Rose, the rookie. Yeah, and this one's going to be a chip shot here. This one's going to be from roughly 28, 29 yards. That's uh, that's going to be an easy chip shot, uh, all things given here. But there's going to be a little bit of pressure with it as well because this is gonna, this could give Fort Worth the lead here and uh, a bu around a buck fifty left for Mexico City to do their own work. Uh, yeah, you got to think she's feeling some butterflies. That snap is perfect, though, and it is down, and Amelia Rose just hits it right down the middle. Uh, rookie proving uh, that she is calm, cool, and collected under pressure as she is able to get three points on the board to give Fort Worth a late lead here in this fourth quarter. Yeah, and if, if anyone pl has played uh, any of the mini camp drills in Madden, that was an easy 500 points straight down the middle for Rose uh, as Fort Worth now has the lead. And now that defense, they got to step up here if they want to stop Mexico City from grabbing a dub. As the kickoff is underway and return from about the 10 yard line and uh Excuse me, Nick Lockett returns it up to about the 31, and that is where the veteran Matt Wilson will have about 70, I'm sorry, 69 yards to go to retake the lead late in this ballgame. Yeah, and with a buck 47, that is plenty of time. We've seen 80 yards and 25 seconds already in this game from one team, so Matt Wilson has plenty of time to work with. 
plenty of time and he's a veteran. He knows what he's doing for sure, but their clock management is going to have to be there and on point as they do get a nine yard gain on that first reception. Going hurry up now is Mexico City as Matt Wilson is back to throw. Has Whoa. plenty of time, but that is tipped. That could have been ball game as he was looking for Jake and McCall over the middle, and that one was going to be that's going to be tipped away and incomplete. Uh, that is number 32, Eddie Bass, one of the backup cornerbacks, making a big play. Yeah, yeah, Bass with a nice pass deflection there, and Delaney Nash deciding to go conservative, just tackling the, the receiver instead of trying to, like, dive for the ball. But nonetheless, this is third and one here. Third and one, and Matt Wilson back to throw, has his man off to the left-hand side, completed up to about the 48-yard line, and they're going to go hurry up once again. Yeah, it's it's just it's quick it's quick goings here, and he finds his man yet again. And eighty-one, that's going to be Jake and McCall. He catches it in bounds, but they oh, might be not playing for the field here. goal. Yeah, they might be playing for a field goal to tie it. Uh, maybe slowing it down. Uh, it's still a quick play call here, nonetheless. But they didn't call a timeout. They didn't go hurry up. They just need to change formation. Interesting. Yeah, they want to get out of that play uh, formation as they hand the ball off over the middle to. Uh, excuse me. Two. Phoenix I don't know Jones if this. I don't know if down. this is a good formation for a hurry up, though. They. Uh, if this is going to be another handoff, they're going to have to get yards here and quick. Uh, as they hand the ball off again to uh, to Phoenix Jones for a two they yard game. They maybe have one more play here before I would call timeout. They do have Cole Varner. He is a veteran. As they do hand the ball off again to. Uh, Phoenix Jones. They might have oh, time for boy. one more play. They got to hurry, oh, though. Boy. They need to hurry. Get I, this play I don't off. Like this. I don't like this formation. If they hand the ball off to. Oh, what a move by Phoenix Jones. They're going to yeah, call it first is. down. And that's going to be timeout and just enough time on the clock to set up a field goal attempt to tie this game up and possibly send this one to overtime. This coaching staff in Mexico City knew exactly what they were doing with that play call and the time they had left to get Nick Varner out to try to attempt this tying field goal. Yeah, 232 at 246 in his career. Cole Varner with probably one of the bigger kicks this week here to possibly tie it up. This is going to be a 46-yard attempt. That's perfect. Kick is up. And it is good. 46-yarder to tie this ball game up at 38 apiece. Two seconds left. There is only one play left until the end of regulation, and that's going to be the kickoff. If I were Mexico City, though, right now, you remember the first half. Cade Stevens had a huge kickoff return that went deep into Mexico City territory. Does he have a yeah. big play left in him now? This is I mean, it. Kate, if he does. <laughs> Cade Stevens, he's been known for big plays, especially in the regular season playoffs. By the way, still in bounds. Absolutely. Kate Stevens receives it from the end zone. Quick and stop. he is only going to bring this up to the 22-yard line. And ladies and gentlemen, we are headed to overtime here in Fort Worth. Tied at 38 apiece. Told you not to go anywhere with two minutes left. Don't go anywhere now. You're watching the SFL here on Twitch, presented by APM Music. What is the call? Give us it. As we get the coin toss for the overtime period, we'll looks Ooh. like Fort Worth is going to receive. Now, remind everyone again here, Brett, is it sudden death in the SFL? Sudden death is essentially you score, you win. Doesn't matter if it's a touchdown, doesn't matter if it's a field goal. The first team to score any points wins the game. As we see everybody getting their fives up in chat right now for overtime. Mexico City to kick this one away. Cole Varner has it off the tee, in the air, returned up the middle by Kate Stevens and brings it out to the 25-yard line. And this rookie has a chance to do what not many rookies have done before him. You want to talk about the ultimate form of pressure. You're talking about first week, you're in overtime, against a semi-finalist perennial playoff team like Mexico City, and you've got the first drive in overtime, that's got to be immense pressure. Let's see what happens. 
Immense pressure. Well, yeah, we definitely need to see what he does with this pressure as he just hands the ball off on the first play. And Jason Williams loses two yards on that play to set up second and long. But yeah, yeah Rito was, was... Go ahead. That was great pressure from Matt Anderson as well as Dan Tritz to get to um, Jason Williams right away. But what you were saying... I'm sorry, I was taking a drink there. Trying to catch my breath. <laughs> uh, Reno, though, back under center with three wide. I was just saying he's going to need to be calm and cool as a rookie here under pressure late in this ball game. Yeah, that'll as do he it. he does exactly that, that will calm him down immensely as he finds number 88, Stephen Hacker, another one of their reliable wide receivers over the middle to get that first down play. Yeah, you want to be calm and cool and collected, you go to the boss. And that's exactly what Reno decided to do here as he threw finds Hacker with another key catch, a nice little slant down the middle to get a key first down and move those chains for Fort Worth, which is going to be big in this overtime period. As he gets this one out in the flats, does Reno, finds his uh, running back Williams for a two-yard gain. Uh, nice, slow, methodical play calling so far. Not like they're in any hurry right now. Knowing that they have plenty of time on the clock, just like, uh, you know, a normal period, uh, but realizing that they need to get a score here. Yeah, but they're also trying to give the defense as much rest as possible because they were on the field a lot in that second half. As they hand the ball off and a nice juke move by Jason Williams to gain seven yards to set up a third and short as Jason Williams just kind of rubs it in the defender's face that uh, he was able to get that many yards before he was tackled. What a nice run by him. Yeah, and, and it got, the separation was all that um, Jason Williams needed, and that's a that's a big, nice gain. It sets up a third and short. Third and short here for Reno. Nice Ooh. throw off to the left-hand side, finds his receiver at midfield, and that's going to be a first down this time. That is going to be Kate Stevens with a nice catch. And then Kate Stevens uh, getting a nice catch in this overtime period. Relatively quiet in the passing game. Um, just gets a little bit ahead of Ronnie Watson there. And I think that's a little bit of a mismatch between receiver and linebacker. As Oh, that was a dangerous throw. But he finds his running back, Jason Williams. Well, one yard loss on that play. But that was a very dangerous throw that went over the heads of maybe two or three different defenders before it found that receiver. Yeah, one of those things when you want to do kind of like a screen pass, you don't want to throw a floater to your running back. You just want to zip it through, give himself as much time to run. Looks like they're on an out pattern uh, right here uh, formation as the, uh, Reno finds his receiver, Cade Stevens, with no another nice catch set up third and medium. Uh, this is the ultimate, uh, you know, this has been this kind of battle all day long uh, between Reno and the secondary of Mexico City. We know they're young. Uh, we know they're untested as this is the first game of the season. Uh, Reno uh, being a rookie himself, this is this is what we've been looking at all day long, ladies and gentlemen, as Reno is looks wow. over the middle. And that was almost a big play by that defense that we were just talking about. Number 42 for Mexico City, Ronnie Watson with a nice tip. Yeah, and it was the the big key there is that Mex or Fort Worth was trying to go with their reliable, their point scoring option there and was trying to see if Steven Hacker was going to get a, above the safeties. And uh, this time, Jeffrey Daggs, along with Ronnie Watson, like you said, they kind of stayed back and they just prevented any deep pass from happening, which is a huge stop for Mexico City. And they're getting the ball back. Yeah, they are getting the ball back. We'll see if they can pin them deep here. Uh, fair caught at the 11-yard line for Matt Wilson and company. And just taking a look at the chat really quick. Mike Daggs saying, Jeffrey almost had number two. He was that close to breaking the record in overtime. Uh, if he would have just been able to hold, hold on to that for a split second instead of knocking it down, he would have had the record. Uh, but not to be so far, but this game's not over yet. As Matt Wilson and company starts this drive from their own 11-yard line. Setting up over center. Hands the ball off to the running back, Ray Bentley. Gets a two-yard game before he's tackled. Yeah, and uh, that's where they're going to start off. They they want to get their running backs going, the, the both of them had uh, really good second halves. Uh, 
with Phoenix Jones up to a buck 43 and Ray Bentley being that uh, that grit and grind kind of guy getting 29 yards on his 10th carry. Matt Wilson in the gun by himself now. Three oh, deep over the middle, push. finds his man. And that is going to be all the way out to the 46-yard line. What a catch indeed by Jacob McCall, setting up a huge first down before he's tackled. Yeah, now we're going to talk about Jacob McCall almost getting to 200 yards in this game. Just, again, that separation, uh, just that, that that big stutter step to change direction. And that's that's it's just a big... Uh, a, just a big X factor for this Mexico City offense. You get him, you get him open. You get, you give Matt Wilson time. He's gonna give it to you. And, and right now, everything's rolling. Handing the ball off now to Phoenix Jones, oh, and he's going nowhere. No yards, uh, uh, no yardage on that play. As number fifty-seven, Golden Dino, the rookie, makes a big play on defense. Yeah, and when you have to follow up to Jail Browning, who has been uh, everywhere among uh, everywhere in the field as well as uh, pretty much beside us with uh, all of the running that he's been doing, it's it's hard to follow up. But he's got five tackles in this game. Back to throw from the gun is Matt Wilson, nice. and he gets hit. Nice play by the defense. That's the number ninety-five, Jabril Kears, another one of those rookies we're talking about, comes away with a huge play here in overtime get pressure and force that in a complete pass and here's something a little bit unorthodox from mexico city here it's a third and long situation a lot of their third down opportunities have been short situations but now they're at a third and ten and these rookies are stepping up for fort worth let's see what happens here as matt wilson sets up in the gun by himself with five wide third and ten here Deep over the middle. That's going to be picked off. Picked off, and that's his second pick of this game. And that's going to be returned all the way up to the 49-yard line. And that is going to be the biggest turnover, though, of this game. Frank Bernstein with his second pick. But none better than that one right there, Brett. Just uh, look at the leaping ability from this free safety. You don't see those a lot from from free safeties. You want to you want to talk about wide receivers out of that as Frank Bernstein gets his second interception of the day. Uh, like you said, rookies are stepping up, and this 60-second overall pick is starting to become a steal out of this draft already. Absolutely, as Fort Worth is looking to steal a win here late in this ball game as they hand the ball off to Jason Williams right up the middle for a two-yard gain, already in plus territory on Mexico's side of the field uh, as we see Watson there come away with a stop. But uh, what a statement win this would be for Fort Worth in the South Division. We know how big this South Division is this year. Uh, at just every win is important. And what a win this would be if they could come out with a, a victory here over a team in Mexico City that that had a playoff appearance, uh, playoff run last season themselves. As they hand the ball off to Williams and gets uh, a loss on that play, uh, setting up a third and nine. Yeah, it looked like Caleb Church, uh, the right guard there, was struggling uh, struggling a little bit to keep the defender away from Williams, which caused the loss here. But again, another big third down play as we tick under five minutes to go in this first overtime period. And we do keep playing overtime until somebody gets a score here, ladies and oh. gentlemen. As that one's going to be picked. And he gets up and tries to run with it, but he's going to be tackled right there at the 23-yard line. And that is going to be Gerard Brody with his first interception of the season making a big play. Yeah, and Gerard Brody is uh, stepping up to play a bigger role for Mexico City as the secondary gets younger and younger here uh, as the second year uh, corner gets his interception back for Mexico City as now they're at the 23. They've got about, I would say, roughly 50, 55 yards uh, to be considered in the hashtag Varner range. I think that's what Mexico City uses on their social media page. But nonetheless, it's Mexico City's ball. Absolutely, from the 23-yard line now as Wilson goes under center, looking for his receiver off to the left, has him, and that's going to be a nine-yard gain, a yard shy of the first down. But Jason Bartley, who's having himself an amazing game so far today, quietly albeit, but a nice gain on that play of nine yards. Yeah, and it, it, he's just been reliable on, on those options there. He's uh, Wilson's tried to tried to target him as much as possible. That that was his fifth reception on ten targets, um, but he's getting he's getting the catches when they need it, and, and a nice nine yard gain to start this drive. 
handing the ball off to Phoenix Jones, and he has plenty of room to rumble as Jones is going to run off to the left side and get a nice six-yard gain before he's tackled right there to set up the first down. Yeah, and that stretch is helping out for uh, Phoenix Jones to get those uh, big yardages. And uh, the big thing is that it's keeping him away from the linebacking core who has been just uh, ever effective for this Fort Worth defense. They've been they've been all over the place. And if you can get some separation on those linebackers, you're going to get some yards. Wilson with two backs behind him with two wide, one on either side on this first and ten play. Hit as he nice threw, but throw. it didn't matter. He found his man, Jason Bartley, for a nice first yard, uh, first down catch. But what kind of poise Matt Wilson had on that play, being able to find his wide open receiver as he was being hit. That has to be the absolute toughest thing as a quarterback is to still throw accurate while you're getting derailed by uh, by a lot an interior lineman and still get that catch. It's amazing. Matt Wilson back to throw, finds Bartley once again. Nice five-yard gain. Second and five coming up here for, uh, for Mexico City, but they're already on Fort Worth side of the field here, Brett. Yeah, and it's a big thing here. I would say uh, another 15, 20 yards, and they'll be they'll be safe into uh, Varner range. Uh, as we get closer to three minutes left in the overtime, they're, they really got to focus on time at this point. Focus on time and uh, time management that's coming up here as they try to hand the ball off to Phoenix Jones. But Joey Schwent says no, sir, and gets a TFL. Uh, tackled down about two yards behind the line to set up a third and six. Yeah, and Schwint's probably been the uh, MVP of this interior line for Fort Worth as he's made some big stops in this game as we get to third down. Third down here, Matt wow. Wilson finding his wide open receiver. That is going to be 89. That is Oren Darby, the rookie, coming up with a huge catch late in this overtime period to set up a first down inside field goal range. And now it's decision time for Mexico City. Do they want to go for the glory here, maybe cut a little bit more time off the clock, or are they just going to go to Cole Varna right away and just kind of guarantee victory? Because they are in field goal range. This would be about a 43-yarder, um, and, and Varna can easily make those, but we still have the offense out. Yeah, I still have the offense out, and I am – just a, you know, I don't know what they're – this is dangerous. Matt Wilson back to throw, uh, finds his man. That's going to be Ray Bentley for a two-yard game. But I would not be – if I were Mexico City right now, I would not be throwing the ball at this point in the game. Yeah, we got the we got the two-minute overtime warning here. Yeah, two-minute warning here in the overtime period. Mexico City looking to uh, come away with a victory as they're in field goal range. As we set up here with a second and eight. No, they're bunching up here. Yeah, I think they're just going to try to run this one. Maybe get the ball in better position for their kicker to get that winning field goal. As they hand the ball off to uh, <clears throat> Phoenix Jones for a nice two-yard uh, two gain. Set up third and six, but I would definitely be running this again. Uh, at, right up the middle if I were Mexico City, uh, try to set up Cole Varner for this game winner coming up here. It looks like they're going to do it one more time. They might. They're, this possibly could are try you, to be a first down conversion. Yeah, are you kidding me right now? This is crazy. Uh, Matt Wilson back in the gun by himself. Four wide, thrown over the right. What a catch. What a catch over the defender. That's going to be caught for a first and goal. And Jacob McCall saying, I will take that ball away from you, Nacho Sicario, and I will set my team up in great scoring position. Man, there, there's a couple people in chat, and there's a couple people on this Mexico City team where they might uh, they might be getting a stain in their, in their, in their drawers after seeing what uh, this Mexico City offense is doing here. But now, easy chip shot, easily. Cole Varner has to make this at this point. Yeah, easy chip shot for... Uh, Cole Varner, the kick is up and it's good. And what looks like improbable at the beginning of this game has been done, ladies and gentlemen. Mexico City came roaring back in the second half, and it took them overtime to do it, but they get the 41 to 38 victory over the young Fort Worth Toros offense and company. 
What a game. What a job done by this Mexico City team. Uh, Matt Wilson just coming away with a big second half. Just talk about what kind of game this was here, Brett. And it basically, it was a tale of two halves, because in the first half, you could, you could give all the praise to Johnny Reno, to Jason Williams, to Mike Twinscrew, to Stephen Hacker. That entire offense was just clicking from end to end. And in the second half, it was just that minor adjustment. In that first half, Fort Worth was getting everything that they wanted downfield. But in the second half, Mexico City just shored that all up, and that gave them ample opportunity to come back in this game score 15 unanswered points to tie it up and then it was just a back and forth contest the rest of the way which caught was forced it into overtime and then mexico city did what they needed to do to get into prime field position on their second possession in overtime and get that field goal for cole varner to kind of seal the deal but man what an amazing game for both teams. There's a there's a lot to go back in, in, into the film room to kind of check out what you need to fix and what's been what's been working well for them. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, like a, a great game to watch here, Nate. Absolutely, a wonderful game to watch here in Week One, wrapping up the final window of games here uh, from Fort Worth. As we take a look at some more of these highlights. Uh, what a game. See, Johnny Reno, the rookie quarterback for Fort Worth, he had absolutely nothing to hang his head about in this game. He ended up with, uh, what a game that he ended up having, though. Just just able to, to uh, come away with a big uh, play after big play early and often in this game. Keeping his team in this game all the way up to the very end. Uh, definitely might be a young offense, but they are going places this season, I have a feeling. And uh, just congrats to Fort Worth and, and playing the kind of game that they played all night long. Yeah, and, they, and they're giving Johnny Reno 303, four touchdowns and two interceptions. That is a definitely a great game here. But player of the game. Player of the game is Matt Wilson being able to lead his squad down for the the uh, winning field goal chip shot by Cole Varner. Uh, but that'll do it here from Fort Worth. One exciting game, one exciting matchup of week one. Uh, week one action for Brett Solberg, Jerry DeGond, Phil Koss in the stats truck. For Cameron Irvine back in the studio, this is Nate Hall. You've been watching the SFL on Twitch. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Video?